Hi there, this is Elaine. So glad you could join me today. This is the fifth story in the Monty and Tonti series, which is all about my dog called Monty and his best friend called Tonti. Monty and Tonti are both border collies and they love to go on adventures together. So make sure you're comfortable, either in bed or somewhere else. Move your body around, pull the covers up so as you feel comfy, cozy and safe. Because I'm going to help you sleep today. You might want to stretch your arms out. You want to move your legs up and down. Squiggle your body until you are just right. Now don't worry if you go to sleep before the end of the story because you can always listen another night. So are you ready for the story? So after jumping over the fence, Monty and Tonti are looking at a shiny gold coin. This is a dragon coin. Now if we rub this, this will transport us to the Valley of Dragons, said Tonti. Ruby the dragon is the last dragon and if we make the journey, she will give us each a wish for anything we want. Really? said Monty. That would be a great adventure. Come on then, rub the coin. So Monty rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and then both dogs found themselves in a spiral and then they fall out onto luscious green grass, a place they didn't know, the Valley of the Dragons. Now this valley was cluttered with giant spiky pine trees and as they were walking they could feel the flowers and the grass touch their legs and the smell of those flowers left a sweet perfume in the air. Come on, said Dondi, keep up. It had been a warm summer and it was nice to feel the cooler air. You know, said Tonti, not everyone is brave enough to go on this journey. I'm getting exhausted, said Monty. We've been climbing this hill for hours. He wondered where Tonti got all her energy from. As the day went on, they found some shelter for the night and sat watching the most beautiful sunset. And as the sun set, well, said Tonti, it was worth it just for that wonderful view. I guess so, said Monty. And as the night became dark, they watched the stars twinkle brightly in the velvet sky. They took off their backpacks, opened a can of pal, and after munching through their dinner, they both settled down to have some well-deserved rest. See, both dogs were really tired. And it's easy to fall into a restful, deep sleep. As they found themselves going deeper. So, so sleepy now. So sleepy. Mm, so sleepy.
next morning, they woke to the sounds of birds chattering and a few pretty singing voices. The sun was already breaking through and although it was cool, I could feel that it was going to be a very warm day. After a few dog biscuits for breakfast and some water, Monty and Tonty were ready to continue their journey. Backpacks on and off they went. As usual, Tonty liked to move fast and Monty was struggling to keep up. Soon they spied a very majestic looking eagle gliding onto the grass. The span of his wings was as large as a sailing boat and both dogs watched in awe as he landed. You dogs are a long way from home. What are you doing here? He said. Oh, we're, we're going to meet Ruby the Last Dragon, said Tonti. But, but we're not sure which path to take. Not many make the journey. You must be very brave and courageous and really want to see her, said the eagle. My, my friend Taunty really wants to meet her, said Monty, with a shrug. A bit worried about being up this big mountain far away from home. You need to take the path. And the eagle pointed to a very steep drop that led all the way down to a river. And then you have to walk to the other side. Ruby's cave is at the top of that mountain. You still have a very long way to go. Thank you, Mr. Eagle, said Dante. I wish you a safe journey, said the eagle. She has special powers, you know, and not many have met her. Yes, yes, I know, said Tonti, now feeling even more excited. Going down the mountain was not easy, and both dogs lost their footing and found themselves sliding down. Soon they knew which part of the path was the safest and they made their way to the bottom. It looks different here, said Monty. Something strange about this place. The sky seemed to be more yellow than blue and it felt mysterious like a fantasy land. The dogs both drank their fill from the river and made their way back up the other side. It kind of is a fantasy land, said Tonti. Remember we came here through rubbing a coin? Yes, 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 I guess so, said Monty. This path was very steep and Monty was huffing and puffing. It was not an easy trail and they had to keep stopping to get their breath. They saw the eagle soaring in the sky above them like he was watching out for them. The higher they climbed, the more eerie it became and the sky was a muddy yellow with purple moving through it and then on the side of the path, there was a sign. It said, Ruby the Last Dragon, Trespassers Beware. What does that mean? said Monty. They, they just want to keep people out, said Monty. We'll be fine. And they continued to climb. Who goes there? came a loud and angry voice. Hello, said Dante. We're looking for Ruby. Who wants her? 
said the voice. We, we, we're two dogs from Australia and we want to meet her. After a few seconds, a little door magically appeared on the side of the mountain, just big enough for the dogs to get through. Come through the door, said the voice, and the dogs did as they were told. They found themselves in a large, light and airy cave with candles lighting up every wall. There were crystals of every colour gleaming in the light. It looked just like you would imagine fairyland to look like. Wait there, said the voice. Over to one side there was a pool of water with steam coming off it and to the other side a walkway up to the sky. And after a while, a large, red, scary looking dragon appeared in front of them. My name is Ruby, said the dragon. You're very brave to come here. Not many animals make this trip. You know, I have magic power and animals who make the trip can ask for one wish each and it will be granted. Oh my, said Monty, really anything we want? Anything you want, said Ruby. But take some time to think about it, because once I cast my spell, I can't take it back. I will take you to a little room where you can wash something to eat and drink and then think about what you want that wish to be. And I will see you in a few hours when you have made your decision. She showed them the door into a nice little place. And after some yummy food and drink and a good wash, as they were both very dirty, they started to talk about what they could wish for. Well, I'm going to ask for a never-ending bone, said Monday. You'll get sick of that very soon, and you'll probably lose your tooth, said Dante. What about we just live forever, said Dante. Nah, nah, nah. You would have to live without your family. Hmm. What about dinner that just keeps refilling itself, said Monty. You would get so fat, said Tonti. How about, I know, what about we have wings, we could fly anywhere, said Tonti. That would look really silly on a dog, said Monty. I know, I know, I know, what about a ball that throws itself? <laughs> of exhaustion, said Tonti. Remember, you don't know when to stop, Monty. Oh, I know, I know. I know, I know. How about we can speak to humans and they can understand us? That would be a good one. Well, that might make things quite complicated, said Monty. I think it's good that we have a different language. Well, what then, said Tonti. They talked for hours and hours and everything they could think of that was a good reason not to have it. Well, I think the only thing we could do is ask Ruby if we gave her our two wishes. What would she wish for? said Tonti. That's a really good idea, said Monty. Let's ask her. 
wait till that day when the dogs proved their idea to Ruby. She had a big tear in her eye. She was overcome with emotion. And to begin with, she couldn't speak. The dogs wondered if they had done something wrong. Eventually, she said, I have lived here for many hundreds of years and have given out many wishes to those who make this difficult journey. What no one knew was that I was cursed by a wicked old wizard. He turned me into a dragon and stuck me in this place for all eternity. And the only way that the spell can be broken is if someone willingly gives me one of their wishes back. And you, you too, are the first ones to do that. Now you have set me free, I can go back to my family, I can live a normal life. You see, I also used to be a dog. Monty and Tonty didn't know what to say. They were so happy that they'd been able to save Ruby and that she could go home. I only need one wish, said Ruby. And the other wish I think you should keep to get you back to your homes and families quickly. Monty was feeling very tired, in fact exhausted, so he agreed to use the other wish to get home. Thank you so much, Monty and Tonty, said Ruby. You are two beautiful, kind and caring dogs and your owners are very lucky to have you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. She then blew some fire from her mouth for the last time and was gone. And Monty and Tonty found themselves outside Monty's yard. Oh my goodness, said Tonty. That felt just like a dream. Yes, yes, it did. Now I just want to get into bed and go to sleep. I can hardly keep my eyes open, said Monty. Monty and Tonty said goodbye and Monty took a great big leap over the fence. The next thing he hears is the engine of the car turn off and his family come through the door. He wags his tail and jumps for joy. They're home and so pleased to see him. They pat him and hug him and snuggle up to him. His tail's wagging so fast now, but he is so tired. It's been a huge day. He has a little bit of food, but he's too tired to eat. A little sip of water and then he curls up in bed like a ball and closes his eyes. He's so, so tired, so, so, so tired. And in his dreams, he goes back to imagining Ruby now, a dog again family. Happy. We did a good thing today, he said to himself. With a little smile on his face, he felt himself drifting into a deep sleep. So, so sleepy now. So, so sleepy. Night night.